regardless of the method, ultimately you are bringing your follicle from the telogen stage back to the antigen stage, or you're attempting to keep it in the antigen stage. I am AQBS and this is Back to the Barber. <music>something nostalgic about old country westerns I still find myself watching them every so often even now it's the you know simplistic kind of lifestyle you had the you know the general plot of the hero versus the villains the hero would always try to do the best thing Although he had his own personal issues and the women loved him and he was mysterious and the townspeople were very thankful for him eventually. And at the end of the movie, you know, he kind of walked off or rode off into the sunset. That same nostalgic feeling of watching old westerns. It's kind of the same feeling we get sometimes when we look at pictures of ourselves or old pictures of ourselves. And although for many of us it's nostalgic and we see the life before, you know, life starts happening with the jobs and stress and bills. Some of us look at the pictures of ourselves and we wish that we can go back in time. And one of those reasons is because of hair loss. I understand. I feel the same way sometimes. Now, there are worse things in life than to have receding or balding. But when people minimize the impact of it psychologically or your mental, especially if you're young, in your 20s or even 30s, I think even 40s too, it can have a strong impact on your daily life. So... If you're feeling that way, I understand. There's hope. In order to get back the way we used to be, we have to reset our scalp conditions. And I say this phrase that I created along the way, which is scalp conditions must be met and maintained while time considerations must be kept to secure gains. The biggest uh, change that we need to make to the follicles themselves is to reset them back to the antigen stage. Now, this is not easy, but what we do have going for us is the fact that the follicles are not dead. They are in a comatose, telogen state based on the conditions of the scalp. So how do you reset, reinitialize, and regrow resting follicles? I'm glad you asked. The first thing you need to do in order to reset follicles that seem to be dead without villous hairs is one, you have to remove the scalp skin that does not belong there. Over time, as your follicles go into the rest intelligence state, your body seems to want to uh, put a, a, a film of skin over those pores because they're inactive. It is better to cover the pore or follicle that is inactive than to keep it open. It's probably some sort of protective layer. And second to this layer, underneath in the dermis and the hippodermis or the third layer of the scalp, this has become fibrotic and calcification which is just a, another way of saying everything that was supple and wet and floating becomes dry and the soft tissues become hard tissue as the inflammation burns, kind of, and the body reacts by rebuilding 
in overbuilding collagen and overbuilding skin in order to deal with the inflammation. But you want to get rid of the extra skin and you do that by microabrasion and derma rolling. Now, what microabrasion does is to remove the actual layers of the skin, which you say, well, how does that relate to hair loss? What well, it really does. And here's why. Microabrasion takes off the layers of skin that will allow topicals to seep deeper. But if you look at your scalp and you do not see little pores that were once follicles, that would that should tell you that the absorption rate or the efficacy of your topical will be uh, miniaturized in itself. It will be nil. Lastly, when you have a layer over the follicles, it somehow keeps the follicle in the telogen comatose state. It will not even release a villus hair. This is similar to how you keep something covered, such as your grass outside. If you don't want weeds to grow, what do you do? You put down a layer of plastic first on the ground, right? You spray the de-weeder or weed spray underneath the plastic and on top of the plastic, and then you put mulch on top of it. What happens? You do not get weeds to grow through because you've locked in the poison pretty much. The same thing when it comes to your follicles and villus hairs. If you have a layer of skin uh, over the follicles, they will have a hard time releasing the villus hairs. This is why you don't see them. Once you do the microabrasion releasing the skin, then you want to deal with micro injury. Now, micro injury works differently. It will release skin per se. But what it's mostly doing is creating puncture so that the topical solutions can go deeper. But it's also doing something else. It is also somehow releasing sebum in some sort of uh, milky calcification that you would see as dandruff. You would see a skin rolling off. It would be rubbery. I suspect that this is a form of fibrosis or calcification. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But what I do know is that it is rubbery, it seems to come from the skin, and it seems to look like paste, sort of. Now, between the microabrasion and microinjury, you will at least have a scalp that is ready to release villus hairs. This is the first step. Now, the villus hairs are basically follicles that have dropped an egg. That's the dermapapilia. And the villus hairs is symbolic that the egg is ready to be fertilized. And that egg has to be fertilized by the right androgens. What is the right androgens? Anything but DHT. There's probably specific androgens like testosterone, maybe another derivative that deals directly with hair, but I don't know that as of yet. I do know that DHT is the opposite androgen that you need to allow to connect to your androgen receptors. Testosterone seems to be the switch on to hair growth and estrogen, it seems to be the nurturer. This is similar to when a, an egg is dropped by a woman. The body does nothing with it. It rolls down right, the uterus, and the sperm hits the egg, life begins and then it attaches itself to the body, the body begins to nurture it. The same thing with the follicle, the feminine follicle. The dermapapilla is there, the representation that it is working is the villus hair, the androgens impregnate it, it begins to grow and it is nurtured by estrogen or some form of estrogen. When you remove the switch, then it stops nurturing the hair. This is the secret to why estrogen and testosterone work as a partner for hair growth. Uh, the DHT that can bind to the receptor, but it is, instead of being a growth switch, it is a deactivation switch. So what happens is estrogen will not nurture a follicle 
that has to switch off because of DHT. And if you look at it that way, it will make sense for you. Once at the antigens, excuse me, once the androgens like testosterone is has the on switch and estrogen is nurturing the hair, this is the process of reinitializing. Now, other things that come into play when it comes to this is stem cells. Why do stem cells work? Stem cells work because when the follicles go into the telogen comatose state, a lot of times the um, the organs of the follicle, the mechanisms are also miniaturized. W what am I trying to say? The blood vessels connected to the follicle or supporting the follicle becomes miniaturized. The muscle of the follicle becomes miniaturized. The Everything that makes the follicle more than a pore is also miniaturized because what you don't use, you what? You lose. And a follicle without a terminal hair is one that is unuseful to the body, so it removes its support system. This is why stem cells work, because for some reason, the stem cells repair the follicle, kind of rejuvenate it, and it begins to uh, be in a better condition to grow hair again. So how do you hack the stem cell um, theory? How do you hack this? You hack the stem cell theory by creating stimulation by creating um, action inside of the scalp. This is using things such as minoxidil, which is a vasodilator. It's increasing blood flow. You can do it natty like myself using things like pine needle, which is my favorite, and rosemary, right? I don't use the oils. I use them with aloe because oils do not seem to penetrate the male pattern balding scalp like it will penetrate the omega scalp. When you have something like an omega scalp, like your wife or your girlfriend or your cousin or your sister, they can use oils just fine, right? Because it's more of a nurturing nutrition thing for them where you're actually trying to stimulate the follicles, which is on the third level of the dermis. The physical mechanical layer needs to be fixed with the conditions. We spoke about that. We spoke about the reinitialization of the follicle with the androgen versus test you do not need to add test to your body to grow hair test is just a switch you need enough of it to switch on the follicle all follicles that can produce a villous hair can produce a terminal hair it is only a matter of time it's only a matter of having the environment conditions decent enough that the follicle can have circulation from the body that the follicles can have, um, that can have the switch on, not the switch off. And after that, it's just a matter of feeding it things such as minoxidil stimulants and proteins and fats in order to help build the follicle. Once your follicle gets into the anogen stage and it looks like a terminal hair, then it will react normal as long as the conditions that you have created stay static. And you can do this by being on a protocol, by using a stack, and by having the same process and updating every so often when you find new information. But it is very, very, very uh, possible to take a bald skin all the way up to a terminal hair and you can do it. And you're going to walk off into the sunset just like the old country westerns. So that's my video for today. If you guys have any ideas of how you think that we could uh, reinitialize follicles, let me know in the comment section. But remember, if I can do it, you all can do it too. Let's get you back to the barber.